Good evening, this is Woodblock Printmaker David Bull, back with what is an annual event for me, announcing our new subscription series for the coming year. I've been working together with Jed Henry for over six years now. We started our collaboration back in 2012 with the original Ukiyo-e Hero series, and that is still ongoing with 17 designs, now available as beautiful Woodblock prints. A year later, in 2013, we began making subscription prints, smaller scale prints in annual sets with a new concept every year. For the most part, these were also based on the same Ukiyo-e Heroes concept, putting game characters back into the old Japanese Ukiyo-e style. They have been hugely successful, and thousands of those little prints have made their way from this workshop to new homes all around the world. For this next series, we are going to break that tradition. Jet and I are going to shake things up a little. No, we're going to shake things up a lot. <laughs> Here's the plan. Jed and I have been thinking about this one for many, many years. We've both been studying the famous Shin Hanga prints of the early 20th century. Here's one by Tsuchiya Koitsu, published by the Doi Hanga Company. Here's a well-known one from, uh, this is the Yoshida family, this is Yoshida Toshi. And then, of course, the famous Kawase Hasui, the king of the Shin Hanga designers. We have many of these different prints in our shop, and they are hugely popular for obvious reasons. But, and here's the problem, these prints are created with a very, very, very large number of overlaid colors. They are very expensive to create. The planning is difficult, carving multiple blocks is really expensive, the trial printing is complicated, and of course, printing so many colors takes the printer a very, very long time for each sheet. So, an inexpensive subscription series of Shin Hanga designs? It's impossible. Or so we thought. But as I said, Jed and I have been thinking about this for years, how we might be able to do this, and we think we have got it cracked. I gave Jed a limit of four pieces of wood. He can use eight faces, you know, four pieces of wood carved on both sides. And he tried to work out for some sample designs how he could combine colors and overlays in such a way as to create these Shin Hanga effects with deep richness in the prints. And after a lot of back and forth between us and some wonderful work by our printers upstairs trying to work this out in practice, we think we have managed to pull this off. Get some of this stuff out of the way here. Here's the first print in our new set. It's a scene set in the new year here in Asakusa. Now I'm very pleased by the initial results. There's a glow of light, a surrounding darkness. There's a wonderful overall depth. There's an entire world all in the space of this little piece of Japanese paper. But where's the game characters? Not this year. I said we were shaking things up, and we're shaking it all up. No games this year. The title of this series is A Japan Journey, and that's exactly what we're going to bring you. Together, we are going to take a trip around Japan to see an interesting set of 12 designs from a variety of places. Now, we don't plan on making this 12 famous places like some of the old Ukiyo-e sets. This initial image does happen to be a well-known location. It's Sensoji in Asakusa, just about one minute from where I'm sitting right now. But it's not snowing tonight. <laughs> but they won't all be like this. For the past three years, while we have been planning this, Jed has come over here at least once a year to get away from his normal work and spend some time here in Japan traveling and sketching. He's been in rural areas and urban areas both. I haven't seen all the pages in his sketchbooks, but I've seen some of the ideas, and I can promise you we have a very wide variety of scenes over the course of this set. And it's all going to unfold in time with the seasons. This is the January design. You're also going to see snow in the February design, plenty of it, but we'll then warm things up as we move forward. Before I explain how you can get these prints, let's have a look at some video clips of how this first one was made. As many of you know, I have a daily routine of streaming on Twitch, and over the past few weeks, regular watchers of the stream saw this print come to life as they were watching. Let's insert some of that footage here. There's the first, the first block you see under my finger, so there's going to be the outline and the darker outline of the characters on the left. 
then that's going to be followed by a second key block, which is also a color block. We're going to mix things up a little bit here. In traditional ukiyo-e, there's a key block with outlines, and then after that, there's colors in everything. We're going to stage this step by step by step by step. This is going to be very difficult to make to get all the registration lined up. First block outlines in, oh, whatever, 80% black. Then the next block will have a color on gray that fills in. You can see it on the sample on the left. It'll be a gray that fills in some of the characters and creates the outlines for the next level of characters in the distance. So this is how this is going to give us distance, moving black in through the planes of the picture. It won't be printed in black. I'm just, this is the black outlines to show you what to carve. It'll be a toned down gray blue. And moving back again, this is a block that will be, what it'll be? It'll be dark blue gray. And this fills in the next level of characters, tones in even deeper on the front level of characters, and puts in some gray parts in the background, like the temple roof. And we can't carve these until this is done to show the outlines. And I can't carve this until this is done to show the outlines. Yeah, coming around the corner in three or four strokes instead of one, which would almost certainly break the tip of this knife. Clear away the waste. This is enjoyable wood to carve. It's smooth and smooth. It's like carving butter, hard butter. You know. When I say butter, I mean it's just it's smooth. The summer grain, winter grain has not so much difference. If you're carving pine, it's wood grain, hard, soft, hard, soft. Gong, 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 gong. A wood like cherry, and this is why we use a wood like cherry, it has much more consistent, smooth grain throughout its whole surface. This is very nice stuff carefully chosen 60 or 70 years ago, and now coming back into service for the second time around. What you see here now, this is the downside of this theory of building up colors on the print bit by bit by bit, because we get sometimes now the same area will be carved again and again and again. And this is now the second time, the third time, I'm going around the outline of this dude at the front here. So to build up to a richer gray, from the key block and one color block and another color block, you have to carve it more than once. There's sort of two ways to do this thing. Every color area can be just carved on a single block, and you just carve it once, which saves carving time. But then each color only gets a single impression, so there's not so much depth to the colors. But if you want the colors to have depth from oh, overlaying, building up, then there's no way around it. You've got to carve them on more than one block. So you find yourself carving the same area again and again and again. And when planning these prints, you've got to keep that in mind, because if it's a really detailed thing, you may spend a ton of time carving and carving and carving the same details again and again. Now we're okay on this, because this is these are masses of color, and I just go around the outside. I can do it in a few minutes. But if this was a very small detailed area, I wouldn't want to be carving it three times. And also then you've got the problem of having them line up, the more detail there is. So it's a, it's a trade-off, absolute trade-off. You say this one looks tedious. That's, that's an interesting observation, you know. We don't, do, we don't do tedious here in this workshop. If we had the idea that this work is tedious, well, our life would be awful. You know, the printer's upstairs, you know, or me when I'm printing. You get a stack of paper, it's whatever, 50 sheets or 100 sheets or 200 sheets. And we print one color, print the next color, print the next color, or in my case here now, carve one branch, carve the next branch, carve the next branch. And there's nothing tedious about it. You either like it or you don't. And, uh, without wanting to be uh, uh, sort of pretentious about this, you know. There's a lot of branches here. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. 
You know, repetition doesn't mean automatically tedium. You can have work that's repetitive, and yet that is still skilled and inherently interesting. You know? This is not so difficult that there's stress involved in every aspect of it. Can I cut this branch? What am I going to do on my night? You know, it's not stressful. It's peaceful, absolutely peaceful work. And it's just something pleasant about it. Knife into wood, cut, slice, cut, slice. Do I get my applause? <laughs> we talked about this before, why, uh, why it's important for me to get these scratch marks out. Uh, this area won't print, this is the, the bottom of the ocean, it's the land masses that will print, not the oceans. But if there's too much roughness down in the ocean area here, then when we're rubbing our pigment over the block, it accumulates here. It builds up and builds up, and it makes islands that actually start to touch the paper. So best practice is you know, to keep the bottom of the oceans here quite smooth. They don't have to be perfectly smooth, but they've got to, in a condition where they don't, to catch too much pigment. And if you're only making a few copies of a print, and modern printmakers usually don't do this, they leave the grooves. But they're only making, you know, what are 5, 10, 20 prints. It doesn't matter because the stuff doesn't build up. But when you're making hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of prints from a block, this becomes a really important thing. Okay, that's how the prints are made, but how does our subscription system work? Now, it's very easy. You just visit our webpage and give us your name and address for shipping. We'll set it up and send you an online invoice for the first print. Once you pay it, we ship. A month later, we send another invoice, and so on and so on over the one-year period. It all ends with the shipment of the 12th print in the set. Each print is packaged very carefully for overseas shipment. Here are some photos of the package for our previous portraits prints. These Japan Journey prints will use exactly the same system. The print mounted in an acid-free folder, then protected in a stiff card. This goes in a clear envelope to protect it from moisture, and it's all sent to you using the latest Japanese commemorative stamps. The storage box you see here is an optional purchase. It allows the prints to be splayed safely behind a protective acrylic sheet, and it has enough room inside to store the entire set and more. And if you don't want the prints on your desk for a while, the stand and acrylic sheet also slip inside for convenient storage of the whole set. So, how much will all this cost? I'm very proud to be able to say that even with the amazing amount of complexity in this handmade print, the price will be very reasonable. Each print is only $45, or the equivalent in euros, pounds, or yen. 
I very much hope that you will join us for this project. The prints are wonderfully high quality, and if you've seen our other video entitled It's Not Garbage, you'll have learned that the washi paper we use for all of our work is a type that lasts literally hundreds of years. It's the same paper used for Japanese prints for many generations. People are always surprised when they visit our shop here, see some of the antique prints on display, and learn that when it says 1840, that's when that exact sheet was made, and they're still in fabulous condition. Anyway, I've talked enough. Please visit the subscription page. I hope you'll think about putting your name in to collect this beautiful print series over the course of the next 12 months. To finish off today, I thought I would, just for fun, put up images of those previous subscription print sets that I mentioned, the ones that Jed and I have produced together over the past few years. There are a lot of them, so we can't stay long on each one. If you want to inspect them more closely, follow the link shown here. Let's start with the Chibi Heroes set of 24. We follow the chibis with Ukiwe Hero's portraits, which we did in two sets of 12. Here's the first set. And here's the second group. We then did the Henry Manga, which was actually a book, but folds out into a long panorama of smashing designs. This yokai face-off series combined old images of yokai drawn by Kawanabe Kyosai back in the Meiji period and paired them with new yokai concepts created by Jed.
and the most recent series was a set of game tropes in woodblock style. That's it for now. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon with a real process video. Thank you again. Good night.